Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. Today we're going to talk about scratching. These are going to be the things that very often are the difference between winning and losing at eight ball, nine ball, 10 ball, straight pool, whatever game you wanna be good at. I'm gonna show you about four or five common scratch shots, but the idea is what I want you to grasp. Not these individual shots, but the idea that causes some of these different shots to end up being scratch shots and how you can go about avoiding those particular shots in those particular situations. So let's get started. It is impossible to make a video, trust me, I've tried, about scratching in pool without talking about the tangent line. If I wanna put this eight ball in this pocket, basically I need to hit the eight ball right there. This line, this 90 degree line where these balls connect is your tangent line. Some of you have heard it so much you think it's a pool term. It's a mathematical term, okay? It's a term used in mathematics. And this is just a tip of the iceberg as to how it is used in mathematics. You only have a cue ball following the tangent line if you shoot a perfect stun shot. Let me repeat that. The cue ball only follows the tangent line if you shoot a perfect stun shot. If shooting this ball in that pocket sends us to the tangent line, we should run into the other black ball, right? Let's take a shot. That's a perfect stun shot. What happens in the real world though? You don't have that exact amount of backspin. You don't have that exact amount of speed. You are usually, and by the way, in most cases, there's not reason to, okay? You don't need it because most of the time you are playing some type of position that involves you to be ahead of or behind the tangent line. It is a very rare occurrence. Write this down because nobody's gonna tell you this. It's a very rare occurrence that you need this cue ball to travel directly along the tangent line. If you do it, you know exactly where it's going. But how many of you are shooting a perfect stun shot with the exact amount of speed and backspin that you're shooting your stop shot? No, less than 5%. But that's okay. You don't need to do it. That's our discussion about the tangent line. We're not gonna get into it anymore. I'm gonna show you common scratches, where the cue ball is going to go, and how to avoid the scratches without harping on the tangent line. Just like you can't make a video about scratching and not talk about the tangent line, it is very difficult to make a video about scratching and not talking about this shot. This is what me and my students call, my students and I, I can speak good English when I want to. <laughs> this is the shot that my students and I call America's favorite scratch shot. Right now, some guy somewhere in some bar is shooting this shot in the pocket and scratching in this pocket. And the reason he's doing it is usually, for some reason, it's almost always on the eight ball. The reason he's doing it is because he doesn't understand how common that is. He's seen it 30 times. He saw, if he plays in the APA, he saw it 30 times last month and, and still manages to do it. So understand that that shot leads straight for that pocket. Sometimes with a 30 degree roll, sometimes with a tangent line roll, sometimes the person adds top to it, sometimes they even put draw on it and force it into that pocket. Recognize that shot and this is how you avoid it. You first identify, which is the key to all of the shots we're gonna look at today. You identify that, hey, that's America's favorite. <laughs> that's America's favorite uh, scratch shot there. Brian told me. All you need to do to avoid this shot, guys, this is, this is, this is beginner level stuff, okay? All you need to do to avoid this scratch shot is number one, don't leave it for yourself. That's advanced player stuff. Okay, 
I tell you guys all the time, don't leave yourself these problem shots and you don't have to worry about them. But in order to make this shot, as long as you're an intermediate player or higher, just put draw on the shot, you'll end up missing the nearest pocket by an entire two diamonds. Put a little bit draw on it, follow through on it, recognize it though as this scratch shot and you can avoid it. Some of the other shots we look at aren't gonna be as obvious, but please get that one out of your game. I apologize to you intermediate players and you advanced players for some of these very elementary shots, but we really should discuss them because this channel is for beginner players to advanced players. And my student, one of my students played in a tournament last week and won a game on this actual shot. His opponent was on the eight ball, not the two, and shot the ball in the pocket and just had the cue ball roll in. But I'm going to show you how to not scratch here if you don't even have a draw shot or if you're so far away that you can't make the draw shot. And a lot of you know enough to come in from an angle to shoot over here and come off the rail first. But sometimes this ball is so deep in the pocket that you cannot do that or you come off the rail and you miss the ball totally. So how do you not scratch on this shot? These are four and a half inch pockets, which means that two balls will fit side by side in the pocket max, which means that the cue ball and the object ball can't go in together, which means that there is always an inch at least on each side or at least one side of your object ball. So what you can do here is shoot for the gap, not the ball. There is a gap here and there is a gap here. If I put this in the gap on this side, it is impossible for me to scratch. I'm not hitting the ball full. I'm aiming for the gap between the ball and the pocket. And you know what? No matter how much we push it in the pocket, we can still hit the gap and not worry about scratching. So here's a common scratch shot that you should work to avoid. I don't know if I can make it scratch for you, but you'll get the point. <laughs> You're playing the ball down in the corner pocket. You've been trained, if you watch this channel, you've been trained to hit the ball in the cushion at the same time. We're actually hitting the cushion just in front of the ball but if you aim for the ball in the cushion at the same time, you're probably going to hit it in the right spot. And the concern is scratching over there. So let's see how close we come to that happening. And then we can talk about how to avoid it. So we're within a quarter of a diamond of scratching. So let's talk about how you can avoid it now that you recognize it as a scratch shot. One of the things you can do as an advanced player is add inside English on this. So this is right hand spin. The reason I say as an advanced player is because as an intermediate player or, or a, especially a beginner player, shooting from this distance with right hand spin, five feet away, six feet away, is going to lead to a miss. As you get better and better and you're more accustomed to using English, you can put some right hand spin on this shot and assure that you're gonna come off the rail there. All right, you can be pretty certain that you're going to come off the rail at that angle if you have all that right hand spin. It actually aids you in making the shot, which is another reason for putting that right hand spin, which by the way, once again, is inside English. Now we didn't shoot it quite from the same angle that we did the first one, but let's look at what happens when we shoot this first one with the right hand spin. This is more likely a scratch shot than the one we just shot. So we shoot it, we've got the inside English on it. We make the ball. We still have so much spin on it. We end up in the middle of that rail and don't need to worry about scratching. I don't know about you, but my favorite bank shot are these reverses where you are coming backwards in order to make the bank. In fact, I'm probably more of a favorite 
to make that shot than to good old angle in, angle out, <laughs> which never seemed to work for, for most players. And there's, there's a lot of reasons why those angle in, angle out measurements don't work for you, but we're not gonna get into that today. We're going to talk about these reverse banks. So let's look at the problem with our reverses. Let's say we're playing the 13, we're shooting it back here, and we put our high right on this and send the 13 down here to this pocket. Did you notice what happened to the cue ball? Came off of this rail, this rail, could have very easily ended up here. Keep in mind what just happened. If I shoot the same shot here, watch the path of my cue ball. It's gonna go all the way around the table and towards that pocket. So again, a lot of high right this time. We go around the table, our cue ball is headed right here. What I want you to understand about these shots is the fact that the shorter one is an easier shot to execute is one thing, but your cue ball is going to travel much further where if we shoot it the long way, I've got this rail and this rail to worry about, but because of the speed that I'm putting on it, I really don't have as many obstacles that are going to cause me to scratch. If I'm going this way, I am guaranteed three rails, one, two, three, and a cue ball that is running much faster around the table. Because of the nature of this shot and what's involved in getting it back here, which is a lot of right hand spin, outside English in this case, the ball has taken on running English that from this angle is going to travel quite a bit. I have a whole list of things that I call advanced player problems. That'll be a video in the future. What's an advanced player problem? They can make this one ball all day and they can get on that eight ball all day, just like that. But what does the advanced player do to create an issue here? They have this shot and they instinctively put right hand English on this shot, which takes it off of this rail at a very dangerous angle. So the shot looks like this. And now what was a, you don't have a chance of scratching shot has turned into Hey, you have a very good chance of scratching shot. Advanced player problems. The reason it's an advanced player problem is because the advanced player is the one putting the outside English on it to get down there for that ball because he's accustomed to doing it or she's accustomed to doing it. The intermediate player, it didn't occur to them to put English on it. They just want to get down table. So they end up taking the right route. The beginner player just wants to put this ball in the pocket he's just going to get positioned by chance. It's going to happen unless he really hits it too hard, but he's going to get positioned by chance. Advanced players, stop getting greedy on these shots. We know you've got that outside English shot. We know you can run the rails. We know you know how to shoot shots where you have running English on the ball, but understand that running English is doing just that. It is running. It is Increasing the speed, the speed becomes less controllable. The angle you actually end up with is less controllable. Be conservative. If you can come off of here or come off of there and know that you're gonna get a very makeable shot on that eight, stop overdoing it. So rather than look at some of the other scratch shots that might come up, let's look at the philosophy around it, the theory about scratch shots. This should help you regardless of where the balls are, regardless of what you're doing. These are just some tips that will keep you from scratching more often. Number one, recognize the most common scratch shots. Things that look like that. Recognize these shots, they come up every day. If you need to come off of multiple rails, ask yourself, am I gonna cross the center of the table? Because if you cross the center of the table from a rail, you cannot scratch in any pocket, okay? 
Let me repeat that. If your ball is going to pass across the exact center of the table and you're only going to come off of this rail and one other rail, as it crosses the table, if it crosses the center, you cannot scratch. If it's going to cross here, it can go in that pocket. Next concept. If you are shooting your favorite or least favorite shot, don't just get down on the shot and worry about making the shot. You have to pay attention to where your cue ball is going to go. Why does this happen so much on the money ball? Two reasons. One, you are just more likely to make errors on the money ball. There's usually fewer balls on the table. You're usually focused on just making that shot. That's one of the reasons why you're scratching more when you're shooting in the eight ball or when you're shooting in the nine ball. The other thing is you're also not playing position. You're not playing position because if that's your eight ball and this is your bank shot, you're not trying to get on another ball. If you were trying to get on another ball, you'd be more conscious about where that cue ball is going to go. But because you don't need to get on another ball, you just tend to let it fly. You have to be careful with that. Next concept, the fewer balls on the table, the more likely you are to scratch by just having the cue ball traveling too far. If there are more balls on the table, you're more likely to scratch from the result of a carom or a billiard where the cue ball is bouncing off of a ball and ending up in the pocket where you didn't see that coming. That happens a lot. That's another advanced player problem. You're breaking up clusters, you're doing different things that maybe the intermediate player and the beginner player aren't doing, and you end up setting yourself up for scratches. So keep all of these concepts plus the half dozen or so that I didn't even mention in mind and you will scratch less frequently. Hit me in the comments. Let me know if this helped you. Give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will talk to you soon. Hit it in the wedge. Just like that. Can you believe that ball didn't go? See you later.